Maybe it's my headphones. No, I can hear you okay. No, I, oh, oh, I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay, you better not be recording that. Okay, you better edit all of this. So, Alan, do you have a, a lacrosse ball or one of these fur balls? Or just any ball? Uh, yeah. I'm not going to use it for like rolling, but I'm going to use it as a test because generally with stretch therapy, when you start, you do a little test just to see how your body feels right now today and if there's any differences left to right. So I'm going to do two tests, but we should wait for Tina. She's just troubleshooting. Uh, I, I would um, going to continue. Tina's just, she'll, she'll join. You'll just join. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Well, just get the ball and then grab that when you're ready. Then change my screen a little bit. Oh, you've got it. Okay, perfect. So all I want you to do is stand up. Stand up, Alan. Yeah. And let's see if you can get the full full length of me. I'll just walk it down the back. Okay. And then please just move this, this as well. What I want you to do is just have your your feet hip distance apart, soft knees, tuck your tailbone. Take a breath and then lift your arms up overhead. And then just see if there's differences left to right. Can you bring one back more than the other? Does there feel restrictions on the side? How do they feel coming back? And are you coming out? Maybe to the side more on one. I can't see your video, but don't worry. I just want you to know how you feel left to right and which one goes back further. You can do this on a wall if you like, but you can already see that I've got more restriction in my left. I can't go back as much. I've got more tightness in um, oblique traps and a little bit. I'm left handed, so that's my on the side. Now grab your ball, and this is just a very simple test to see your range in your shoulder. And this is something called, oh, Alan, do you want to change the angle so I can see your upper body? That's okay. Um, yeah, perfect. All right. So this is something called a teacup drill. You just have the, the ball in your hand, so flat, so you're not like flipping it. Flat. It's going to be harder for you to move without the maybe falling out. So I'll just demonstrate first, just watch. And the reason why it's called a teacup is because it's a little saucer on the bottom. So you're like swiveling around, taking it around, and then you're taking it to make the cup. And so you're taking your shoulder into, you know, a few ranges. But the reason why um, I'm getting to this is just to see where does it feel restrictive in that drill. So you just take the ball flat, flat down there. And you just take it underneath, so you're taking into the rotation, and then you're extending straight arm, might lean back a little bit, flexion, and then you're coming around, and you're completing the circle. Yeah. So does any part of that feel harder or hard than, than the other parts of the movement? Just, just remember that. And then you can go the other way. So, okay, so you start at the top, come it up, in front, and then make the little so it's about so just try and do that and see. You know, what part of the drill is hardest for you? Is it when you come out behind or is it when you go underneath and you straighten your arm? Is it difficult to straighten your arm? Or is it to come out in front? Maybe the top part of your shoulder? Yeah, yeah top part maybe. <laughs> yeah, okay, so then do, do it with the other hand and then just, just notice. So, Got your hand, palm up, 
take it from the inside, straightening out, leaning forward, looking into extension back, and completely. So one, one side of your arm would definitely be more restricted than the other. Don't worry if you lose support, it's like pretty, pretty standard for you to do that. And then come in the other way. So scooping out, making the top part. So bending behind you, making the top part. And coming straight through. And then source of heart. It is like quite um, difficult in some parts. But it gives you. I guess an indication of where your shoulder is restricted. And the more you have to use your body to, to keep the ball in there, then that's where you need to, to work the most. But we're going to work on all the, all the muscles with quite some tense stretches. So let's do another one. Let me go. Move forward. I think the hard, the hard part for the people if they don't have restriction in their shoulder to roll completely forward or back is coming up and having it straight and then extending from behind them. Anyway, that's just a good, a good drill or exercise to show you how your shoulders feel in most of the movements. So I just pop that, pop that down and we're just going to do a warm up before we do a few intense stretches for the shoulder. Yeah, so just like soft knees, hip distance apart, and we're just gonna pull our shoulder up to our, the direction of our ear, and then you want to have a flat arm um, down more. Feel stronger for you. Just try and maintain the neutral spine and not, not hunching or like curling. Straight up. Okay, and then we'll try squeezing those up and then pushing down. So lifting up the traps and squeezing down. Lats and the lateral line muscles. And remember to breathe. Like you can practice like a quick in and slow release in. Then go on and out to four. Okay, so then you're swimming with your shoulders without your arms. And if you want, you can have a little bit of um, a slump so you get more. So, Ali, you can see there's another um, me, another video is on four of our on. In case you want to see another angle. And backward. So all the way up to you. If you want, you can turn your torso a little bit just to get more range. Yep. And then just like lots of hands. I'm just going to like like to swing up and push it down. And the momentum from pushing down will just fly your hands up. And you just, it's like no effort. You're just pushing down. And then you're going to pick it up. Just turn back some more. You might find, oh, I can't push or extend back my arm as much. That would take things you need to work on. And then I want you to breathe in and take your arms together and you're going to kind of round your back. So sit like that, bring it together. And then turn your palms up and then breathe out. And then breathe in, bring your palms back, your palms together. Round, round out. So you're kind of like contracting, pushing the shoulder back and then opening. So 
mental fluid. Then you can even like dip your head a little bit, you know, get some curvature in your back. And okay, so you can have a shake. We're going to have our hands up. We're just going to do a little bit of just, yeah. It reminds me of like, like an Egyptian type hands in. And then you're going to take your hand into a bit of a right screw twisting action. Forward and twisting. You, can, you don't have to change the direction of your head. I just feel like it's easier. And you notice parts of the deltoids start to get sore. It's actually quite a bit of a workout. Okay, so then give your arms a shake. And then you're just going to do some ragdoll rotation. So maybe a little bit more for the hip to this part. And then you're just going to swing around. And don't worry what, where your arms end up. And if you want, you can pivot up your foot. So like lift your foot so you get more of a rotation. So back row up. up. Middle, middle, low. Right, just so you're getting a rotation and you're also getting some spinal boost. Okay. So, so with you, um, Mike, you're bending, bending your elbows. Just try and keep them straight. And, and use your foot to pivot up to get more of the swelling together. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully, your shoulders and your arms keep in a shape. Okay. Stop um, rotating now. So, this stretch is for medial rotator, which is the muscle on the inside of the shoulder blade. It's really hard to get to, and if you've ever had a massage, it's pretty agonizing. Um, so the setup for this, I'll do the right side first, the mirror me, or just do the right side. And we're gonna do like a bit of a leg and do it kind of toes. <laughs> yep. Hand facing you. And then you take the other hand. Yep. Other hand out stretch. And then swing it under. You're gonna get within the crease of your elbow. You're gonna turn your wrist so it's facing or touching by your hand. So if you look at me. It, it's kind of like if you've done yoga, it's a modified kind of eagle arm pose. Yep, so your hand is just touching that. Right. So once you've got contact, you want to raise that up, you want to push it away. So you're going to kind of slump to take the muscle away from the socket. And then you're going to externally rotate. So if you're, if you're doing your right arm, you're trying to take your right arm outward. So you're using your hand on top. And I'll just turn around so you can various angles and you should feel it at the back of your shoulder blade or at least the uh, just behind your arm and you just take a few deep breaths there if you're not feeling it you might want to raise it up a bit more slump a bit more twist a bit more but um, it should feel pretty strong There are contractions here, but I, I think it's strong. I won't get you guys to it, maybe in another video. And then slowly unravel. Keep your arm um, a bit of shape. If you want, you can just rub that side. You felt some discomfort. It's not meant to be like, oh, like really nice and gentle. You will feel a decent stretch. I want to take that edge so you're actually feeling some sort of effect afterwards because we will test at the end and then see. So just do the other side, so I'm doing the left, let me do this side. Arm out, swing under, into the elbow crevice, place your hand on your hand, so you turn it in, just like that. Um, lifting up, pushing away to something, and then 
externally rotating. So rotating your arm outward. So it's your left, you're taking your left arm towards the left side and your hand on top is providing a little bit of power. And don't worry if you, you can't get your whole hand on your wrist. Like it requires um, you know, wrist mobility and shoulder. Hi Tina. Hello. Um, you've got us in the middle of an origami kind of wrist. I need to come out of to show you. So just try and warm up your shoulders. Just do a little bit of um, shoulder rolling. And then, yeah, just do just do a little bit of like swimming forwards with your shoulders, Tina, and then after you've done that, walk go backwards and just just try and warm up shoulders like any any way that you can. I'll just show you a few examples. Yeah, and then and, and then swing you around. You can go back and do the video once I've um once I've done. Okay, so we're going to do a stretch for the lateral rotator. That's where my tattoo is. Um, so you're going to take your arm. And it's like you're going to try and put it across your throat. And it's like giving yourself a little pat on the back. Uh, and you're going to take the other arm. It looks like a bit of a rhomboid stretch. So you know when people see that people from the department are doing this. It's just it's a variation of this, but it's all that lateral rotator. You're taking it behind you, patting yourself on the back, using this arm like push it backwards. So I'll just turn around so you can see. And if you do have some mobility, you can put your hand behind your head and push your head. That's a much stronger stretch, but you can't get there and you just, yeah, don't worry. Like the main things that you're feeling, some sort of sensation here, this detachment behind the arm. If you don't feel it, please wave frantically. Your elbow, please push you back. Good to see Mike's. Flexibility. If you want a contraction, which is just don't move, but you're gently pressing your um, your elbow against your arm, which is up three, two, one, relax, breath, and on the next breath out, you just try to push your arm so your arm across your neck is coming a little bit. One more breath. And just give your arms a bit of a shake. All right. Step one, okay. A bit intense. Okay, so other hand on your shoulder, giving yourself a pat on the back. Take this other arm. And we're going to push it more towards us till we feel stretch just behind the shoulder. Our arm is just coming behind us. Stronger variation. You straighten the arm and put your hand behind your head and push your head. So you don't have to do this and just demonstrating. Gently press your elbow against your arm. Three, two, one. Relax. Breath. And on the next breath out, just try and gently press in a little bit further. And then take two more deep breaths. And slowly add that one. Oh. 
right. This one is called the Three Amigos, but I think it's better as Charlie's Angels. Um, so you make your hand like a gun that shoots someone. And this one is for like stretching the rhomboids, the back of your shoulders, trying to take it away from the spine. And you're gonna look downwards and you're gonna press this gun towards the feet. And so like you're kind of squeezing your shoulders together. So you're pulling your shoulders away from your spine. And there's no there's no contractions here, it's just just a quick stretch in the back. No deep breaths. Tina, I'll tell you when to look up. And let go of your arms. Just bring your shoulders forward and back. So you're going to do that again, but you're going to do it behind you. Sneak up behind someone with a gun, hand it up. And you're pressing down and opening up the chest. So you're still looking up, you're not looking down. Yeah. Your shoulders behind you. Try not to um to stick your bum out. It's very easy to take that into your spot while you're doing this. You're trying to keep your spine just opening that chest, shoulder, shoulders back, and falling down. If you want to be stronger, give a little lift. You need to squeeze the shoulder blades back a bit more. But if you can't do to stay where you are, then take a few deep breaths. Slowly let go of the hand. Here's a bit of a wiggle. We may as well do some wrist sensations while we're here. So just roll wrists. One way, roll the other. Take some water. And do it in a circle if you want. It's what we do in gymnastics. But just do it on the spot. <laughs> okay. And all right, so we're going to do some hip mobility. And before I take you through a stretch, we're just going to warm up hips. So I'll bring my mat, hopefully you can see and hopefully see here this other the main one is here. So I want you to sit in a Z sit. So it's like your legs are just out to one side. Do you want me to come closer or this is okay? Maybe you can. All right. So have your hands behind you. And you're just going to take it. Don't worry if you can't get with one leg down. Pop them up. You're just warming up the hip joint. So you're just going to take it up and it. So it's it. And you're sticking your hip up a little bit. So you can't hit forward. And then you can turn over your sticking to the right foot forward. It's just a warm up for the hip joint. However, you feel comfortable placing your hands behind if you want your hands. This way or this way, and it doesn't really, it doesn't really matter. The focus is the hip joint. Yeah. Just trying to make it smooth. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Nick, what Alan's doing is more like a windshield wiper thing, which is fine um, if, you, if you can't get your leg forward down to the ground. Instead, it's just going to go back to this gap. Yeah. So you bring in the hip. Perfect. And then, and then you slowly move to the one side. So you can use it. Okay. And how do your arms feel comfortable? It's harder when you've got longer legs. You're like, hey, how do I put these? Um, yeah. So when you stay in one set, try to have your hand like that. And place one part of your glute 
and I'm having a hip and I'm just trying to roll it forward. So if I just maybe have one hand at the side supporting you, take one hand, pop it one on your thigh and foot and just these four fingers on your hip and kind of roll forward and then roll back. See this knee wants to come off as well when you can roll back that knee. And then we change the other side, replacing our hearing or thumb in my foot, and four fingers on the front of the hip, and roll them forward, roll them back. So, um, so anyway, I don't know if you have a lacrosse ball, that's like bad ball. Just tell me if you do, if we don't, we'll skip this exercise. Um, I don't have one, sorry. You don't have one, okay. What are words going to get? I'll find oh. one. Okay, if you don't, we can skip it. But this is only like two minutes. And what I want you to do is before a hip flexor stretch, before you get into that lunge and you're in that for a bit, a good thing to do is to trigger point this part of your hip flexor. So if you find that your bony part of your hip at the front, the highest bit, and then come, come down, probably stick on and everyone, but that's two inches but more medially, more inward, like this line of like, I guess, if you were wearing like, a brief under it, um, be like more in the middle. <laughs> yeah. And what I want you to do is lie on your front and trigger point of the ball, just one minute each side. And you feel like, where am I going? How am I going to find this spot? I need someone to press it on me. Um, you'll find it, it's pretty painful. <laughs> so just below the hip, you travel down um, an inch or so. Show up, hand up. You don't need a mat for this. Just the hard surface and fall and just blow the hip. And you want to just go in a little bit towards the inside. Yeah. Just blow the hip one, one or two inches and then just a little bit medially. You'll find that spot which is a bit painful and you just want to sit on that for a minute, just like little micro movement. It's not even really hard to see on camera. But essentially, I'll just make a separated move. But it's just a few millimeters. And I'll just check the bit for a minute. You found one, Tina? Um, I'm trying. <laughs> we will only be here for a, a, another minute or so. So you can do a little bit of circular action. Alan, I hope you found it. It's a pretty painful spot. Okay. It kind of exercises the side of the video because it looks like we're doing nothing but we normally are. And then if you want to intensify it, you can lift up the leg. Add some more weight to the front. Up and we'll do the other, the other side. Mm -hmm. Let's do what I'm going to this for the camera. So just under the hip. The centimeters and then a little bit in at the end of the line. Okay, just one minute here. We're going to make as much noise and facial expressions as we can. Let's get some sitting. 
turned off all the calories that you spend sitting, you took the one out, and then sitting down from the other one. And you're sitting down to the bed, and you're sitting if you drop it, and then if you sit in a few position, you're pretty much sitting and flexing your hip flexors in the bottom of your feet, which is why it's so important to open the bottom. Okay, I feel like I've had enough, even though I can probably be. Get up, give that slight bit of a rub. One side would have been tougher than the other. It's usually your dominant side. For me, it's my left. Pop that away. And what I want you to get is some sort of chair or stool, some sort of a platform. And if you have a bit of a sensitive knee, you might want to pad that up with either a pad or a roll up towel. And um, I'm going to use a little stool just so it's easier for you to see what I'm doing. But what I would like to do is just, just have your chair or whatever platform it is you're going to use on hand, and I'll just demonstrate this first. Okay. So just, just watch this setup. So you would know the general setup of a hip flexor stretch. You'd be in a lunge. I'll show you what that is. Um, your foot's under your knee, doing this lunge and the knees get back. And the three, three cues that, so um, just watch first before, before doing it and then I'll cue you through. The first cue is you're going to tuck the tailbone. So already when you tuck, you're bringing um, your, like one of the quads, like the um, out into stretch. And so you should really feel like a little bit of a pull back. So tucking tailbone, squaring up hips. People are like, what does squaring up hips mean? Um, they, you place your fingertips on top of your hips. Give a squeeze. You'll notice that my right one is further back than my left one. So you want to bring that in mind. So that means bring the left one back and bring the right one forward while you're maintaining this tuck. So they're in line. You don't want to see this structure. You just want to see the silhouette or the outline of this. And that's when you know the line. So then this platform comes in handy. You can't touch the floor, but for demonstration purposes, placing hands in there, you're using your lats and your arms to pull you forward while you're maintaining top and square. And then while you're at the hands, you'll notice, oh, maybe my knee starts coming over my ankle and start Creeping that forward. But that is the basic, the basic setup. And from there, all the contractions and variations happen. So I just want you to hop into that position first, and then I will cue you through. Mike, I can't see your legs, but don't worry, I trust you. Okay. Right. So we have some sort of platform in front of you so you can use it to pull your arms. Oh, yeah, perfect. You've got a couch here. Um, so you, so you, I just move it so you can see my foot. So your foot's just underneath your knee or a little bit in front. Tucking the tailbone. So bringing your, your tailbone and tucking under so you feel like your foot's going back and you get a little bit of stretch with your first. Placing your fingertips on your hips and bringing your hips in line with each other. So when I see a camera, I'm not seeing one part of the door, I'm seeing the other side of the leg. Okay, so tucking, spraying up the hip, they're in line, and then you're leaning forward, placing your hands on the platform and using the lats, which is the little wings underneath your arms, pulling you forward. And don't worry if you come out of the hip line or the, the top, because you can correct those once you're in position. And if your ankle starts coming underneath your knee, then creep your foot forward a little bit. And you're using your arms to pull you forward. And you just have like a little bit of a micro wiggle. 
like turning the hip in, turning up. I'm just feeling what line is tightest for you? If you're confused about what, what I'm doing, essentially what I'm doing is I'm just like twisting my hip in, just my hip out, and I'm seeing like what parts of my leg feel tightest at the front. Take a few deep breaths here. You could be in this stretch for a long time. You could flex with a really large muscle. And if you feel like you're coming out of the line of time, bring the stretching leg hip forward. And that would usually be on the and then try and bring up the tailbone. I don't want you arching your back, so if you feel like you're advancing in the stretch, um, and you feel like you, you want to bring your arms forward, you could, you could go down to the elbow. But only, only if you feel like this is all in line. That makes sense. One little exercise just before we come out of it is untuck the toes. And so, yeah, perfect. That's the elements we're going to concentrate. And you're going to very slowly push your heel back without lifting your hips and your knee. So you will eventually lift your knee, but it's essentially this type. You feel burn at the front. Just wave frantically. You go. Use your platform and push yourself slowly forward. Take 10 seconds to come out of it. Swing your leg back. And then just come down into the lower recovery child's pose. How did everyone find that? Are you okay surviving? Is it strong? Not strong enough? You'll find um, one side will be tighter than the other, and you'll want to go back and do that in your own time. So then we're just setting up the other foot. I'm sure you're okay to see on this side. Just make sure you've got space to like pull yourself forward, you're not know, going to a wall or yeah, so foot underneath or just a bit in front, you're in the one position. First thing, tucking tailbone. And then you bring on the stretch in the front. And then bring the right side. Okay. Yeah. And then squaring up your hip. So bring like the right foot behind the left, you bring it forward, placing the hands down, chair, or if you've got it behind you, and using your lats to underneath your arms, pulling forward. Notice as I come forward, my knees start to make sense. Breathe a little bit more. Just have a little bit of um, movement side to side for the leg that you're stretching. And see how that feels. And then you relax even more.
in the future classes, I'll do this and I'll add variations that can track things in stronger things. You know, like structures to do your foundation, last one, etc. You know, so if you're coming out of alignment, trying to use square, you can to really pull yourself forward. So it really works. Slowly untap your toes. Yep. And we're going to slowly drag our heel back without lifting our hips. You should feel a bit of burn the front of the foot being stretched over. And take a break in the chair. Give a hug. Looking for a time. Yeah. You can like this. Not your thumbs where, where it hurt the most. It's just quite an intense. Um, Hip flexor stretch, and you can add on more and more and more layers um, to to make it stronger. And um, unfortunately, you know, due to self isolation, we can't make this part the stretch. I mean, you guys can part the stretch. <laughs> um, but that'll be another time. Thanks so much for that, Joe. That was awesome. A very nice, uh, nice way to start the day. Feeling very relaxed now to uh, get stuck into my work. So thank you. Or, or go back for another nap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. How, how do yeah, you great. find it to Thank, you? Thanks so much, Jan. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you so much. It's probably quite intense at some point. Um, you know, did you actually manage to find a ball? I didn't even really like I did. Yeah, I've got a tent. Oh, okay. So I'm going to oh, fine. Keep going. It's I'm going to keep going with it because it's pretty painful. So I'm just going to keep doing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Awesome. Well, I think Michael put up the video and tell you guys when it's up. Yeah, so I'll you can go uh, back and do those arm 